Good morning. I am Reverend Avnik Christian and I welcome you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that wherever you are worshipping today may bring a new meaning of Christ the King Sunday today. So I hope that you will enjoy. Before we begin, I want to share with you the, some of the most important um, uh, announcements. This Saturday, we are going to participate in a Frosty Fest. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do is having a breakfast with Santa as our tradition every single year. It will start on uh, at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And uh, please come if you need, if you want to take a pictures of the Chicago Center picture, uh, please come and take pictures with Center, but also have breakfast. All the proceeds that you are going to bring um, uh, goes to the neighborhood pantries. What a wonderful way to kick off uh, uh, the Christmas season by uh, be present, but also uh, to uh, participate in uh, the homeless um, ministry, uh, shelter ministry. So I hope that you will join us. Please bring your friends and neighbors uh, so that we may be uh, together and celebrate and also participate in uh, redeeming work. Remember, we are going to start our sermon series next week. Also, uh, our uh, Advent and Christmas sermon series is um, Gift of the Present. And I hope that you will join us every, uh, every week um, online or if possible uh, also uh, in person. In Christmas Day, we are going to both have Christmas Day service and also uh, Christmas Eve service. So our Christmas Eve service is going to be two times because it's on Sunday. So you have uh, uh, a chance to, uh, be, uh, to actually have both the service in the morning and the evening to participate in it. Uh, our morning service will be lessons and carols, and in our evening service will be candlelight and carols and communion. I hope that you will join us. The morning services will be at 10 a.m. on Christmas Eve, uh, and uh, and Christmas Eve service will be on, uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, and I hope that you will join us uh, uh, in uh, coming and celebrating the incarnate Jesus. Let us begin our service. As we begin, uh, we invite the Holy Spirit into our space as we listen to Patty's prelude. Thank you. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
week is the Christ the King or a reign of Christ Sunday, which concludes year A of the revised common lectionary. We have three uh, years and this year was year A. Next week uh, is in our church calendar is a new year. And so we begin a new year, year B, uh, with the Advent season and the first step of year long pilgrimage through the gospel of Mark. That is what we're going to do. This is one of the rare times in year when Christianity's two Advents, Jesus' first coming of Advent and Christmas, and his second coming at the end of the age come into close connection, which is this second coming. The second coming is this, and the uh, Advent is the next week. The one who presides on the throne of glory in this week's passage is the same one who is uh, who in just a few weeks will be born helpless in an unremarked backwater town. Jesus has retreated to the Mount of Olives in our scripture today and his disciples came to him privately before him and, we, uh, and asked him the questions about the end of the age because Jesus is talking about that he's going to go into the crucifixion and he's going to die and that is when the disciples have come and asked that what should be done. The question, the unspoken question and underneath these spoken ones is how shall we conduct ourselves in the meantime while you will be coming back? After you leave Jesus, how shall we live? That is a question that disciples were asking in Matthew chapter 24 from the beginning of the Matthew chapter 24. Jesus answers with a series of teachings and parables culminating with this week's story. He talks about the ten pride brides and he talks about the talents and now he's talking about this ships and goat. And he's talking about the throne that the, uh, the king is going to come. Separation, judgment and punishment. Welcome to the church this morning. That is what we're going to talk. So what do you make of today's gospel? Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. It's wonderful gospel. Please read it before you listen to my sermon. Is Jesus separating the goat from the good from the bad? Is Jesus saying so, some are welcome and included in the kingdom, but others are rejected and excluded? Is Jesus keeping score of what we have done and left undone and then handing out rewards and punishment? And if he is, are you in or out or sheep or a goat? I suspect many would say yes. That's exactly what he's doing. That's often how this text has interpreted uh, in past. And I'm finding it some new light in it while I'm studying it, while in the place and after the COVID era in this time. And though too often that's how we live and we, we separate ourselves from those who look, act, believe, live, and do differently from us. And then we label them as wrong and bad people or wrong and bad choices and ourselves as right and good. Look at all the ways that the happening are, that is happening in our world and in our country today. Politics, war, race, immigration, economy. Everybody's taking side which is good and which is bad. And the, line, and the list goes on and on. It's not just happening at the national level. However, it's also personal and local. I have made those kind of separations in my life. And maybe you have done that too. When I look at those kind of separations in my life and our country, I see the loss of relationship, the negation of human dignity, the impoverishment of life. And that just doesn't fit with how the Gospels portrayed 
Jesus or what he says about himself. Because remember in that same gospel, in that same gospel that we read, we have learned and Jesus himself has said, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That is what it's called in John chapter 3, 17. And then again in John 10, 10, he says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So why would he exclude people? Why would he say, well, others may go to teach? What do we do with those verses in light of today's gospel? I wonder if we are misunderstood what's happening when Jesus separates. Maybe the separation Jesus makes doesn't look alike. Uh, a thing like the separations we usually make. Maybe the purpose of separation Jesus makes is the exact opposite of the purpose for we, which we often make separations. So if, uh, what if uh, for Jesus, uh, separation is not the same as exclusion? Are you there? What if Jesus' separation is not the same as exclusion? What if badness is not an obstacle to being in the kingdom, but neither is goodness a prerequisite? After all, both groups in today's gospel, which is sheep and goat, ask Jesus the same question, Lord, when was it? that we saw you. Neither, had a, neither one had a clue about what they were doing. They just had different ways of being. And what if separation is a necessary and a creative part of life? From the time we are born, we are learning how to separate and make separations. It's a natural, and a necessary part of life when we, when we are growing up. A newborn experiences himself or herself as one with the world. Baby cries and the world responds with food, dry diapers, cuddles, cooings, holding, kisses. Then one day baby cries and the world does not respond or takes too long and baby begins to express, express his or her separation from the world. Have you ever been around the child who was learning and practicing the word no? I have been in that, both my sons. They practice no very early in their life. It is a terrible twos, but that's really going on. Is that what? It's about suppression. That little one is discovering some autonomy, individuality, and a new life. And it doesn't end there. Do you remember the struggles and arguments and dis difficulties of the uh, adolescent uh, years? It was a time of separating from parental authority, social norms, and beginning to discover our place in the world. Think about the day you or your child left home to go to the school, start a work, get married. I did that. I actually changed the from India to come here in the United States of America. That's more separation. And it was about creating a new life, a new way of being. The difficulty of those years is not so much about the two-year-old adolescent or young adult being wrong or bad, but a sign that separating, growing up, and claiming the fullness of our life is hard and often painful work at any age, at every age. And it never ends. It's ongoing process of seeking to create and discover for ourselves like and more life.
Every choice we make involves a separation. The only question is whether that separation is giving life or taking life. Whether that separation is finding Christ or eliminating Christ. That's the difference between the ship and the goat in our gospel today. When have you had to separate yourself from another person or a relationship, destructive patterns or behaviors, your work, busyness, fear, hatred, anger, resentment, disappointment, in order to grow up, recover yourself and let new life arise? When have you made a separation that was actually an exclusion and diminishment of life for yourself or another? We make choices. We have a free will that we make choices and through that choices we want to claim what it is. Think about this creation story in Genesis and the necessity of separation. God separated light from darkness. The waters above the dome from the waters beneath the dome. The seas from the dry land, the day from the night. God wasn't excluding. God was creating. Separation is at the center of the creation and life. And what if that's exactly what Jesus is doing in today's gospel? Separating in order to bring about a new creation, a new life, a new way of being in you and in me. It's not about sheep or uh, goats, but about sheep and goats. <laughs> No one is all sheep or all goat. Who here have ever given food, water, or clothes to someone in need? Visited someone in hospital or jail? Welcome a stranger. And if, you re if I ask you to raise your hand, you will say, yes, you have done. By money, by praying, by being present. And at the same time, then you are a sheep. Now, who here has driven past the guy on the corner holding a sign saying, I'm homeless and hungry, or turn away from the stranger? Raise your hand and I will say yes. Then you or me are a goat. I have done both and it looks like you have too. So are we sheep or goat? Yes and yes, we are. We are both. There are parts of our lives that are ship-like and other parts that are goat-like. I don't know about you, but it's a whole lot easier for me to see and focus on the goat-like parts in you than in myself. <laughs> I rather not have to face and deal with my goat self. That is what we say. We, we, look, we look at other people's goat self very easily. But when it comes to ours, we don't. We are a wounded, fearful, self-betraying and hurting parts of myself. They need growth, healing and transformation. Or to put it in the imagery that Jesus uses, they are the parts of myself in need of an eternal fire. I want us to be careful here. Very careful. Are you listening? I want us to be very careful here. Eternal is not about a length of time. It is a quality of God, a way of being. So when we speak of eternal life, we are speaking about the divine life. And when we speak of eternal life, we are speaking about the divine fire. When you are speaking of eternal fire, we are speaking of eternal divine fire. Both eternal life and eternal fire are God's. It's not as if eternal life is with God and eternal fire is apart from God. One is not an entrance to the kingdom and the other the exclusion from the kingdom. Both are within and aspects of the kingdom of God. This eternal fire lets us see ourselves and others in a new light, in the light of compassion, mercy, justice, forgiveness, and love. 
It is a purifying and refining fire burning the dross of our life and revealing the gold that is already and always has been within us. Because in our scripture, it says that you who are blessed, that means our we are not right. We don't have to do anything to be righteous and be part of it. But we are already righteous because God has rewarded with that. <laughs> It's like when I was a kid and put in time out, I was told to go sit on, the, on, the, on my bed or think about what I have done or said. My parents weren't seeking uh, uh, retribution, but reformation. They didn't want something from me. They wanted me. I was being separated, but not excluded. I was being separated to know what I have done wrong. The only reason for that separation was so that I might come back to my parents and sister with a new way of being, seeing, and listening, relating, and loving, and knowing. The fire of time out was about my growing up and taking my place in the family, a place I had never lost. And I think that's what's happening in today's gospel for the goats and the goat-like parts of your life and my life. Let's not deny, ignore, or run from the goat-like parts of our life. There are always places of hope, growth, new possibilities, and more life. You see, the goat life, goat and sheep are together in that pen, and we are both represents that. The separation Jesus makes is never final, always conditional, and in anticipation of our re returning to ourselves and one another with new life, more life. I wonder what that means for goat life, goat like parts of our life today? What are the wounded and hurting parts of your life in need of healing and transformation? What are the patterns and behaviors that continue to cause us or you to stumble and betray yourself? What draws needs to be burned away? From whom or what? do you need to separate in order to make room and give space for new life to arise? And what are you doing about this? That is what, that is what the scripture is talking about. I remember goat and sheep are together in that thing. And sheep are, sheep are very ignorant, dumb people. Goats are the one who takes care of the sheep. But at the end, when the separation comes, the goats are put aside because that's a good part. Uh, sheep are set aside because that's a good part, but the goats are set aside. But when that, when the goat in that timeout, in that eternal fire, in that fire of timeout, when they come to know what the compassion is about, when they come to know what it is about, then they come back and then they come to the right side. And that is all we are called to do. I hope that we may be coming back. I hope that we may see it. Amen. Our church is sustained through this wilderness time by your faithful generosity. You can continue to send your offerings by mail, or for more information about setting up an electronic funds transfer, contact Roberta Kent or Pastor Abney.
today. I hope that this Saturday you will join us for Breakfast with Santa. Please bring your neighbors, your friends to participate in this wonderful uh, event. Uh, and we hope that you will join us. Also, remember, we are going to start next week our Advent series uh, called Gifts of the present so please tune in you will see a lot of things going on i hope that you will join us please tune in as much as you can in our facebook uh, posts now as you go from here may the peace be with you may the love of jesus christ be with you and the holy spirit's presence be reside in everything that you do in the name of father and the son and the holy spirit Amen. Mm -hmm.